Uh, I'm Tana. I am a technical designer at Dinosaur Polo Club, and I make video games about transport infrastructure, but fun. And uh, I am Casey Lucas Quaid. I am the community manager at Dinosaur Polo Club, and uh, it is my job to keep our players uh, entertained, informed, and uh, keep the feedback flowing between the team uh, and the people who play our games. That's a good one because like on one hand there's definitely a sense of community in the sense that um, it's a small and insular enough industry that everyone knows each other. Uh, that can be a good thing and a bad thing. Uh, it means that sometimes uh, it can feel kind of like a, like a closed wagon circle that can be like difficult for um, junior people or fresh graduates or uh, anyone who's like new to the industry to kind of uh, penetrate the wall as it were. Um, but on the other hand, it does mean that uh, there's a lot of collaboration. Everyone knows that they can ask everyone else for advice. Um, there are so many awesome community managers uh, in the games industry in New Zealand, and uh, anytime I feel like lost or confused about something, I can always just like reach out to one of them, and they will not only like be able to help, but they will have the answers, and we'll have a chat about it, we'll have a laugh about it, and it's just very, uh, there's a nice exchange of ideas going on. I think on top of that as well with games, it's this interesting point where the thing you work on and the thing you kind of do outside of work sometimes are, have a lot of overlap. Mm. So people have a lot in common, not just their jobs, but their hobbies as well, yeah. uh, which adds to the sense of community a lot. You can always make something fun. It's just a matter of how much work you put into it. But I think the more important part is that you can take social values and take problems from social values, and anything that's a problem is going to be fun to solve. Well, you can make it fun to solve in some way. We have problems with, like, card-dependent cities. You can just make a game about making, turning a city from card-dependent to not card-dependent, and that is socially aware, and also making people aware of how that actually looks like in an ideal situation as a mechanic. And once it's a mechanic, not just a narrative or a perfect ideal, it's something the player has tangible hands-on, and then once they can do it themselves, they can see how it can be done in the real world. It isn't even done uh, intentionally. The principles and values of the people who make a thing are always reflected in the thing once it is created, whether they intend it to or not. And so the easiest way to instill games that you're making with uh, a solid kind of set of ethical pillars and um, a sense of social responsibility is to cultivate that in the environment in which you make the game and to uh, make sure that the people that you are making your game with uh, reflect the values um, that you hold responsible and that you care about. That's not really a thing that we set out as like a goal when we're creating a project. You know, it's something that tends to develop organically um, as you are uh, iterating on your concept and uh, coming up with the game itself. I mean, as always, it's just a it's just a case of uh, resources and scope and time. You know, like there are. Um, there are an infinite number of ways to tell a story and to uh, present a compelling narrative around a social problem in games, but at the end of the day, you're always going to be limited by the funding you have, the talent you have, uh, and the time you have. Um, on one hand, I think that there's been a lot of progress in the sense that there's been uh, just exponential growth in terms of employment opportunities and revenue and number of studios and number of uh, jobs and uh, number of companies that we're engaging with overseas and creating cool, exciting, refreshing, uh, really like intellectually stimulating work. There's just been a lot of uh, a lot of opportunities to, to find someone who's willing to kind of champion the games industry uh, on a government level and uh, understand and engage with us and understand the issues that some of the um, companies in the country uh, are facing. And um, yeah, it would it would be good to, to just get some more support along those lines. I think as a as a self-sustaining entity, um, the industry here has done an amazing job with what it's been given, which is uh, not not a lot. We have seen programs like <coughs> Code and Dunedin, which are doing this excellent thing where Dunedin is just going to end up being this game development hotspot in mm. New Zealand in general, just because of the amount of funding they're injecting into small. Oh, the, the work that they're it's, doing is amazing. It's excellent. I used to spend a lot of time in like uh, team versus team games, mm. uh, and eventually they just stopped appealing to me. Uh, so. 
social games for me are ones where I can hang out with my friends in social environments, things like Sea of Thieves, uh, where you're just hanging out on a boat, or Deep Rock Galactic, where you're just hanging out in a bar and sometimes underground. <laughs> I think these kind of games are social for me. That's something I think could, we could do more of, single player social games. <laughs> Games that have a social element that don't doesn't require like constant real time interaction um, can be really cool, and I love exploring those features. And speaking as a uh, you can tell on my accent uh, as an immigrant to New Zealand, one of the things that I really like about those um, asynchronous, not real time games is that uh, you can play in your New Zealand time zone with your friends from back home in you know like where, wherever they happen to be, you know like North America, Latin America, you know like the UK, wherever a whole you know bunch of time zones that are very inconvenient to game with here normally and um, it just allows you to continue having that social experience um, without uh, staying up so late that your body is a crumbling ruin the next day. Probably <laughs> Jackbox, honestly. Yeah. Like that's one just where it's fun generated by people mm -hmm. uh, and when it's your close group of friends just mucking around Okay. <laughs> I got my primary like social online real time experience uh, playing games uh, by playing MUDs. And I remember back in the day there was a um, a big like mud raid that my friends and I coordinated on where there were like God, it must, been, it must have been like over 30 people um, coordinating to go like slay a big monster. I don't even remember the, the big deal about it. But the fact that we were doing that like in a text-based game that had the most rudimentary coded combat system and um, you're having to like type out your little emotes to explain what you're doing while reading at like lightning speed because 30 other people are typing the same stuff and you're having to like keep track of the fact that the monster is very powerful and your dude has very few hit points and if it hits you once you will have to run or else you will die that sort of stuff and it was just all very like kind of seat of the pants excitement and um, modern games kind of sprung from that seed I think and the social element uh, was definitely the primary driver of playing those games for me. I mean, first off, anything that exists does that just by virtue of being created in the culture that it was created in. Whether there is an intent to participate in uh, the culture in a sense of trying to um, engage with a certain theory or certain philosophical aspects, um, any, any game is an artifact of culture. It just depends on, um, oh, a number of things. Uh, lasting power is definitely one of them. I feel like uh, games as an industry and games as an art form move so fast that uh, oftentimes stuff that has real genuine artistic value can kind of get lost in the noise. Uh, our living memory of media and culture and art and games depends on people having a method to preserve it and tech companies and uh, the sort of greater capitalist insistence that like something doesn't have value unless it is generating revenue at this exact second, um, it's, it's just, it's smothering our ability to hold on to the stuff that we have created. We take releases of games a lot for granted in that during the release there is, if it punctures the cultural zeitgeist it will make a lasting impact no matter what, even if every copy of it disappears off the earth, everyone will remember it and remember their experiences and remember sharing that excitement with everyone else.